what incentive is there for people who, are, who, who make various claims, even ones that are true, uh, what incentive do they have to be shown they're wrong or put themselves out there in a position to be shown they're wrong? Yeah, um, good question because generally um, it's very much human nature that people don't want to be shown that they're wrong, of course, and they will avoid things. Um, our, our beliefs tend to create preferences and we prefer things that agree with us. Um, the main motivation for people to get into using Rebutter is the fact that it's a tool, it in itself is completely neutral. So everyone will install it to argue and fight for their own beliefs. So um, if you know, creationists can use Rebutter because there is a debate going on on the internet where people, evolutionists and creationists, fight amongst each, each other. Um, and creationists are absolutely certain that they're right. You know, they don't fight their belief because they're just trying to be problematic. They really believe it. So they can install Rebutta and add their responses to evolutionist claims um, just the same as evolutionists can add their responses to creationist claims. And what we're trying to do is Rebutta is not saying that this is wrong and this is right. It's just mapping the discussions that are already happening. These, these are happening. We just need to be able to follow their sequence because without having that map, without providing that sequence, we're having the same discussions over and over and over again. And it's becoming redundant and pointless. There's only so many times that atheists can respond to Pascal's wager. And I say that, but we've already proven that there's not so many times. We can just keep doing it over and over and over again. Or we can make a system when, whenever someone finds a page on Pascal's wager, that page is linked to the best response ever written to it. And then that best response can have a response to it. Um, but we need the people adding them. So people will install it to add their own perspectives. And then, once they've added it to fight for their own beliefs, um, there's the periphery of beliefs. So a creationist is dead certain that creationism is right. Fine, that's fine. You're probably not going to change their minds. Um, and they're probably going to ignore all the rebuttals of their own arguments. Um, that's just human nature. But maybe they don't know much about vaccination. So they've installed it to fight for creationism, and then a friend shares a vaccination article, and they start reading it, and a rebuttal pops up, and they read the rebuttal, and they get a fully informed perspective on vaccination rather than a biased perspective. So people don't install it. So the creationists won't install it to find out creationism wrong. They'll install it, install it to push creationism. But while they're doing that, they will be informed about vaccination, GMOs, climate change, all of these other topical issues which we talk about in society that most people, seriously, most people are ignorant about. Most of us are ignorant about most things, but we're passionate about one or two. So install Rebutter for those one or two, and then find yourself better informed about everything else. Do you think Rebutter could be used as a tool to introduce people to uh, some of the tools of critical thinking? Uh, one of those tools obviously being con not only considering someone's argument, um, but also considering the counter-arguments even to their own. Definitely. In fact, um, I think that's a big part of my inspiration behind the idea. Because um, back when I was at university, I first encountered you know, my first interaction with an internet forum. And it was that experience that, um, actually I think it was physics forums as well. I was studying biology and philosophy and I got stuck into physics forums and I loved it. And that experience actually taught me a lot because I kept finding myself being corrected. I kept being wrong. And th I think that experience was just incredibly educational for me because of that interaction. And people would send me links and I'd read it and go, oh, wow, I hadn't thought of that. I didn't know that. And so being corrected was an amazingly powerful thing for me. But of course, it always happened in things that I didn't know a lot about. And so, yeah, so if someone, uh, you know, again, the creationist example, they install rebutter and then they find themselves reading rebuttals about other subjects, then that experience of going, oh, wow, I hadn't thought of that, or, oh, wow, I didn't know about that um, logical fallacy, and now I can see it clearly contrasted between this claim where they've read this article which is making arguments, and those arguments are compelling, and they sound good, and when you're reading them, your brain's going, well, this, this makes sense, this makes sense, but while they're reading it, they've, they've been alerted, there's a rebuttal to this, so they're going, it makes sense, I wonder, I wonder why someone disagrees with this. this, this makes so much sense. And then you read the rebuttal and it's like, oh, they didn't control the control, whatever, you know, there's right. something, when you read the rebuttal, like, I'm such an idiot, I was falling for it. 
And when you have that moment of realization that you fall for compelling arguments that are based on nothing, then it changes your perspective to everything. And you, you yeah, it's, it's a little revelation into yourself to, to, to realize that you're fallible. And yeah, and it can spill over into everything you believe. It's quite a powerful moment. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I guess to, to follow up on that, like, where do you see where Butter going? I mean, it's, it's right now, it's a, it's a Chrome extension. Um, what do you want to see it grow into? Do you want it to go move past that? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my vision's a little bit out there. I want, I want the internet, I want Rebutter to be part of the internet. That's the ideal. I think every, part, every person using every page of the internet should be constantly reminded that this article, this argument is not an authority. It is not fact. It is a claim written by a fallible person making fallible arguments and, and other people will disagree with it and go read them. And, you know, that just should be a part of, everything should have a little bit of back, pushing back, you know, a little bit of pushback. Um, but like, you know, how that happens, I don't know. You know, um, I, I, you can't really restructure the internet to fit our little app. But um, there's lots of ways that it can come about. Um, so our process at the moment is we're just a browser extension. But we're about to start work on a, a frame version, so that's browser independent. And the vision that I have for that is when you reach that sort of level of critical mass where you know everyone sort of knows about us, um, whenever you're reading a page which you're like, I want to see a rebuttal on this, you just go to the URL and type in rebutter.com slash in front of the URL. And it will then reload the page you're looking at with a frame and will tell you whether there's rebuttals. So that sort of creates a ubiquitous, a ubiquitous presence. It's always there whenever you want it. You just type rebutter.com and it'll bring up the rebuttals to the page you're looking at. Um, but then we still need people to know about us. Um, so the next step up from that would be, say, Google integrating our database of rebuttals into their search results. So you get the search results come up and it's like, here's the search results you want. This page also has 20 rebuttals linked to it. Because you know, Google often have um, little links below each link saying cached version, um, I've forgotten all the other links they have, uh, related pages and things like that. Um, so I could envision rebuttals being linked in that. That actually be a really good tool because I mean, I for one use Google all the time, but that would be a great little, that would be amazing if Google can integrate that. Yeah. Um, and I think that something like that would be something they'd be open to, especially in the future with all the stuff they're doing. Um, do you, is, is one of the goals of Rebutter to make little scientists out of everybody? Um, actually, scientist is probably the wrong word. Little philosophers. I think scientists often discredit philosophy too much because it's make-believe. Make, make make believe. It's made up. It's just airy-fairy. But philosophy, science is just a subset of philosophy. It's a, it's, it's a particular way of thinking and one that I happen to agree with. Um, but yeah, critical thinking and critical analysis is you know, a philosophical thing. And yeah, everyone should be philosophical because you should, you know, what is life? How, what is a good life? How do we live? These are, these are questions that everyone should be pondering. And when you, you're reading things on the internet and they're changing your mind and making you believe things, your beliefs affect the actions that you take. They affect your choices. And if you're making, if you have false beliefs, you believe things that aren't true, then they will direct your choices towards things which will cause you and others harm. Um, and this is a, something that's very important to me. If we want to progress in society, if we want less suffering and more positive progress, then false beliefs really get in the way of that. And so, um, yeah, a world full of critical philosophers who are careful about what they believe, I, th I think that can only be good. I do too. Uh, that a friend of mine, uh, JT Eberhard, who has a blog, What Would JT Do? Uh, he, that's part of his, uh, one of his talks. He says that very often. He says uh, he brings up uh, cases of uh, parents who have prayed their kids to death. And he makes a, a lot of effort to say, listen, you know, these parents did love their kid. It's not that they don't love their child. It's because they believe bad things about, or false things about the world and acted on them. And the false beliefs are what the, what the problem is. That's why we have to go after them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually very glad to hear that you basically echo something that a friend of mine is very passionate about yeah, as far as the point. Very, very important to me as well. Destroying, so what I view the skeptical movement now is basically a war on false beliefs. 
Our objective is to destroy false beliefs. Our objectives are not to prove homeopathy wrong, because for all we know we're wrong, but we want to find the truth. It's, and it is the, the idea of science in general, to test the world, to, uh, I think it was um, Carl Sagan or Neil deGrasse Tyson, I can't remember, it's rigorously interrogating the universe. And, like, that's the process of science and also skepticism. Skepticism is, is just a broader perspective because it's also history and, and literature or whatever. You know, rigorously interrogate the facts to reach the truth as best we can. We'll never get truth, but the best that we can. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ian, for joining us today. No problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm.